What's going YouTube? Mike here again. Finally, I'm posting an eBay video. Uh, a lot of you guys have been asking me, please, please post another eBay video. But now I get to merge two things that I like, I love the most, which is automotive and eBay. And I'm going to show you how I sold in my very first year $191,000 in sales. Uh, for those of you, he says, you know, a lot of you guys say like, ah, oh, he's lying. He's lying. He has to be lying. He just says it for clickbait or whatever like that. So this is my uh, 2012 uh, PayPal uh, 1099. If you guys are wondering, this is $191,000. Uh, this one's on sale from uh, January, huh, my voice cracked, January through December. Uh, funny thing though, is that this wasn't actually a full year that I did eBay. Um, in January and February, I was actually on a two month long road trip with my best friend and I was actually selling on eBay while on the road. I took actually some of my merchandise and some of the stuff that, some of the stuff that I usually sell and I took it on the road with me. I have pictures, I have proof. Uh, but for those two year, two months from January on January and February, in January I sold fifty two hundred dollars. Um, and February I sold seven thousand seven thousand six hundred dollars all on the road, driving throughout the United States. I probably put close to maybe 5,000 miles on my car. At the time, I got photos of that anyway. Anyway guys, I'm gonna show you how I did it. Uh, for those of you who are wondering, uh, that was done with primarily all automotive parts. And prim primarily, I did it all at the junkyard. Um, stuff that I actually uh, picked up at the junkyard so my daily grind every single day was I, w I woke up early every day um, I do live in Las Vegas super hot um, so in the summers it's like it goes over like 110 degrees uh, I would go and go and visit the pick apart if you guys don't know pick aparts are you know a junkyard that you go to and you'd pay uh, we pay like a dollar for our junkyard here we have a couple junkyards uh, one on the east side of town and then one in like Henderson area uh, border highway area and I would hit up those junkyards now I'd go in early in the morning and I would have a schedule the schedule would tell me um, when new cars would come in they had specific dates when new cars would come in and you get to see what cars they bring in um, if you kind of get buddy buddy with them you get this information and you'd go there and I would specifically target cars that I knew which would kind of bring me profit because if you guys don't know, you know, Hondas and Acura's, ah, they're, you know, people, Ricer cars. It's a lot of people love them. A lot of people have those specific cars. They sold, you know, hundreds of thousands of these cars and a lot of the, even though they're 20 years old, people still fix them up. So these, Integras and Civics, they're known for having motor swaps. So people who swap in motors, they need the parts to swap in the cars. So uh, for you know those of you who know Hondas and Acuras, Acura, if you want to put an Acura engine, which is still a Honda engine, in a Civic, you need parts from the Acura. It's almost ex like identical parts. So I would go and look for swap parts, okay? For those of you who know who swap parts are, it's basically parts you would need in order to transfer that engine, um, that motor into a Honda Civic. Honda Civics had like less powerful motors, so they would always swap Integra motors. So things that you would need, for those of you who are automotively, automotively literate, you'd know that uh, for Hondas, you'd know that you need a T-bracket, you need axles, um, you need an immediate shaft. You need all these little things in order to swap that part into um, your Honda Civic and it was you know growing traction everywhere in the United States uh, back in the day in the, like the Midwest they were more still domestics but now they transferred over to you know having these Hondas now I knew that and I would go and target these specific cars I would target uh, parts that had discontinued uh, parts okay so a lot of you heard before uh, Honda uh, like CRX CRX's are you know are an iconic car a lot of the cars in the Midwest, and I live in a dry, deserty area. If you go north where there's snow and salt, these cars would be rusted out, okay? 
So in order to replace their parts, instead of buying new ones, which if you go to the dealership is very, very expensive, I would target, um, you know, well, I would not target, but I would get parts from the desert, which we have no snow, we have no salt, and they would be perfect condition, um, and I would post them on eBay. A lot of people from northern countries where there's snow and salt, uh, and sleet and salt on the roads, uh, they would replace them with good parts. I had all the good parts because if you guys don't know, man, all the all the undercarriage are all rusted, salt, all everything is seized. So I would provide basically perfect uh, condition parts to send out to the northwest. Uh, and uh, I mean northwest and the northeast. So this is kind of like my my daily grind, guys. So I'd go to the junkyard, I look for parts, and I would sell the same exact parts over and over again. So I would sell, say, I had a intermediate shaft. Intermediate shaft um, is located in the center of the motor. It connects. It connects two axles together. Um, well, not necessarily, but the transmission does. But they look exactly the same. Um, and I would go and, you know, get some engine degreaser and just wipe it down and have the same exact photo. Um, I would look for the exact same parts over and over and over again. And at these pickup parts, guys, you can get the parts for $10, $5. A lot of the times, uh, they have actually a charts of pricing per item. And they have a list of items that are on the car that are commonly found in cars. The problem is, is that the guy on the, the guy behind the window sometimes don't know what that part is. You know, they don't look identical uh, on every single car, and he just give me a generic price and you know like five bucks, ten bucks for these little brackets and stuff like that. And I ended up making a killing, guys. I mean, you know, if you look at this, if you look at this chart, I'd sell. Uh, in June, twenty-one thousand dollars. July, twenty-three thousand dollars. This is the stuff that I would do, and I would, I would kind of target cars that I knew that is a very popular car. So if you guys are wondering, you know, you don't target like a Pinto, or you don't target cars like a, you know, Ford Festiva. It, it, it just doesn't translate well because not a lot of people want to keep that car they just throw it away you know so right now you think about it like what 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 information can i give you now like what is a popular car now a popular car right now are things that you see people fix up or there's videos on youtube so right now i have an mr2 right i have an mr2 because it belonged to my one of my best friends 10 years ago this car wasn't very popular uh but now because of a specific swap which is the k20 k24 swap uh, because of Race Lab, if you guys don't know, there's a video on YouTube where this guy is just racing people down in Texas on the highway and he smokes everyone. He's like 1,000 horsepower cars. Now that car went up in value. Um, right now, when drifting got popular, 240s, you can't find a freaking 240 for the life of you right now. They have drift tax. It's called drift tax on them. It's so stupid. Like These cars were 1000 bucks uh 15 10 15 years ago now you'd pay for an uh, uh 3000 4000 for an average body if it's really nice you know 5 6000 or on up because they are iconic japanese cars and they're a purpose like they have a purpose so they drift they used to be super cheap so everyone would drift in them now everyone wants them so supply and demand guys so you'd find parts for 240s. Like a lot of people would find automatic 240s and get uh, the manual transmission um, pedals and things to convert them to manual. Those are the parts that I would buy and sell and flip. Wiring harnesses uh, for engines. They're like, okay, uh, I would target uh, VTEC uh, engine wiring harnesses and sell them on eBay because a lot of the cars were non-VTEC and they wanted a VTEC motor, which is a more powerful motor. Uh, a lot, if this is making not making sense to you because I'm speaking like automotive jargon, I'm sorry. But these, this is the type of stuff that I did, guys, and this is what grew my business. Uh, my very first year of doing eBay 
was just going to the junkyard and selling $191,000 worth of junkyard stuff. And it was a good profit, guys. You'd imagine um, you're buying stuff for 10 20 bucks, and I'm selling them for $80, $90, $100, $200. Because this, this pricing is exactly the same across the board in any car that they sold at the junkyard. They wouldn't change the pricing depending on what popular car it is. So, I mean, if I'm finding parts for, you know, a Lamborghini or, you know, whatever, it's still going to cost the same amount of money. They don't know what the harness comes out of. Um, you know, you're not going to probably find that in the junkyard, in this specific junkyard, but this is the stuff that I would do. And another thing that I would do was I would go and meet people who would kind of part out their builds. So someone who is saving parts, who bought thousands of dollars of parts um, to make, you know, to do a, their dream build, uh, their project car. And they just didn't end up doing it. They'd ha kind of have, you know, kind of life happens. They'd have children or, you know, they've been saving up all this money, bought all this parts, and they never ended up putting it together. Uh, I would go there and I would buy all their parts and I would sell them on eBay. And uh, number one advice, guys, is to, you know, be patient. A lot of this is just investment and flipping. And for those of you who are want to start, you guys have a garage full. I know you guys have a garage full of parts right now that you can sell and flip on eBay and you can make a killing off of just what's already in your garage and you don't know and realize what it's worth until you put it out there. But I would recommend you searching on eBay and saying, hey, what is someone selling it for? Oh, what's the buy it not what what's the buy it now price? I didn't know. Oh, I didn't know it was going for a hundred bucks. And you just had this money sitting in your garage? Sitting in your garage. So I am commending you guys. I am telling you guys right now, go out there, go flip, go sell stuff on eBay, make some money. Um, have a good day, guys. Until the next video, please like and please subscribe. Peace out.